Admiral Richardson and uh, Admiral Greener can go introduce themselves so once we get to the march going, they'll give two short statements and then take a couple questions. And we're here to talk to you about an incident that took place in Charleston. And uh, we'd like to stick to that if possible. And fire away. And I'll point out who's going to ask the questions as well. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Danny. Good afternoon, and thanks for having us this afternoon. Uh, I'm Admiral John Greener, the Chief of Naval Operations, and I have with me the Director for Navy Nuclear Propulsion, Admiral John Richardson. We're here to discuss allegations of cheating on a written qualification exam at one of our uh, nuclear training commands. We learned about this yesterday evening. Uh, we were alerted of the incident, and it took place in Charleston, South Carolina, at our Navy Nuclear Propulsion Command there. The propulsion exam was allegedly shared amongst some senior enlisted operators. And Admiral John Richardson uh, here, he will speak more about the details of the incident and uh, where we are so far. To say that I'm disappointed would be an understatement uh, whenever I hear about integrity issues. Uh, it's disruptive to our unit's success, and it's definitely contrary to all of our core values, our Navy core values, and it affects the very basis of our ethos. <clears throat> the foundation of our conduct throughout the Navy is integrity. We expect more from our sailors, especially our senior sailors, uh, and we demand it in our training and in our operations, and we will operate to that. The incident, uh, I underline, does not represent the hundreds of thousands of professional sailors who are operating with honor, honor and integrity throughout our fleet today. We set high expectations within our Navy, <clears throat> particularly this program, the Navy Nuclear Propulsion Program. It has five decades of distinguished service and it is all founded on integrity. Our sailors are held to a standard, a very high standard, and this will not change. So I assure you if these allegations are substantiated, we will hold the appropriate sailors, they hold the appropriate people accountable. We will remain vigilant throughout the program as we have been, as I said, for five decades. We'll learn from this and we'll do a case study and we'll train on it. Uh, John, over to you uh, and then we'll take some questions. Thank you, CNO. And as the CNO said, I'm uh, Admiral John Richardson, the Director of Naval Reactors. Uh, as such, I have cradled a grave responsibility for the Navy's nuclear propulsion program. And as this incident involves my program, I take full responsibility for this incident. This is mine to investigate and to correct. I was made aware of this situation uh, yesterday on 3 February when one of our sailors from the Nuclear Power Training Unit in Charleston, South Carolina, was offered to compromise his integrity recognized that this was wrong and reported it to the command. The Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program of aggressively focuses on managing problems, whether those are material, operational, or personnel problems, with the intent of finding and correcting problems while they are still relatively small. And so in addition to self-examinations, each element of the program is examined by outside inspectors, and we aggressively respond to any problems that they find as well. On rare occasions, an integrity incident occurs that includes an element of collusion between more senior people. For instance, for, for, for your uh, reference, the last comparable incident of this nature took place in 2010 on board a submarine crew. Integrity is a foundational element of our program, and when confronted with problems, we respond aggressively and forcefully. Now, although the investigation is just beginning, I'd like to try to provide some details for your information. Uh, this incident took place in our school. Uh, we have a one-year training program that includes six months of classroom training, theoretical training, and six months of hands-on training. Uh, we do this in Charleston on two converted submarines that we use as training reactors to certify operators to report to the fleet. So this is propulsion uh, reactors not related to nuclear weapons. This incident involves members of the school staff who are required to qualify to operate and instruct students on the training reactor. We operate using 11-person watch teams. So there's an 11-person team on watch when, to operate the reactor. Uh, this incident, as the CNO said, involves the compromise, the alleged compromise of the written exam to qualify just one of those 11 watch stations, one of the 11-person team. Uh, to qualify for that position, in addition to the written exam uh, that we are discussing and investigating, one must also pass an oral academic board given by a three-person panel 
and must pass an evaluated practical exam showing satisfactory performance. From what we know so far, these elements of the qualification program appear to be valid. Once qualified, their individual on-watch performance is further evaluated by external inspectors, evaluation by my field representatives on site, and through a separate continuing training program. We have seen no major concerns from those other assessments to date. Finally, once the staff member completes his tour at the uh, schoolhouse and returns to the fleet, the process begins anew. And they are required to requalify using the same process on the ship to which they report. And this ship, this command, is also subject to the internal and external inspections and oversight that I have just described. It is this philosophy of defense in depth that allows me to assure you that our naval reactors are operating safely. This is a serious incident. As the CNO said, integrity is the foundation of our business. The Training Command and NCIS have begun a full investigation that will be led by a nuclear qualified submarine admiral. Initial efforts to ensure that we will be to ensure that we have properly bound the problem. To date, we are getting good cooperation with the investigation. The training reactors were shut down for routine maintenance at the, uh, when we learned of this incident. Uh, the training command has ensured that all personnel implicated in this so far have been uh, removed from uh, the site. Their access has been uh, revoked. And all current personnel on watch are those who have uh, no element of implication. As a precautionary measure, these personnel are also being retested to validate their knowledge. Additionally, I've assigned extra supervision to the operating teams. I will not reauthorize operation of the reactors until I am personally satisfied that appropriate corrective actions have been taken and additional conservative measures have been implemented. Additionally, I have a five-person co cadre of, per of uh, personnel from my headquarters that have flown down to the site, led by a senior Navy captain, to assess the command climate in other areas and to ensure the investig investigation is getting started properly. This team will review past assessments with the goal of ensuring that we do not have a broader problem at this command. In closing, I'd like to restate that I am fully responsible for this matter. I'm aggressively, aggressively moving to address the situation. We take our record of over 55 years of safe and reliable operation of na naval nuclear propulsion plants very seriously. While I can't provide much more information at this time due to the ongoing investigation, I will keep you as fully informed as possible. We intend to be as transparent as possible as we work our way through this. Thank you, and I'm happy to uh, be uh, answering any questions that I can, subject to the understanding that there is an active investigation going on. Um, Admiral, for, for both of you, I was just wondering, one, if you could maybe clarify a couple of more details. Uh, did this involve emailing questions or answers to the to the staff and did it also involve any violation possibly of classified material or um, access to classified material and then secondly as you know the Air Force has had some cheating issues um, also within part of their nuclear mm -hmm. force and their comments have been that it is they worry that it's systemic and that um, this is a broad morale problem that involves people who were cheating because they felt the need to get 100% because it affected their promotions. I'm wondering if you could address whether those are also among some of your concerns. Mm -hmm. With respect to the uh, uh, exams themselves and the nature of what we're talking about, most of that will be uh, more fully developed in the uh, investigation. Uh, but it's uh, fair to say that these uh, exams and the operation of the plants do involve classified information, and that'll be an active part of the investigation to uh, uh, fully understand that. With respect to the uh, morale we uh, and, and the, the necessity to pass these exams in order to advance, that's, that, that's not really a dimension of our program. Uh, we do not have that, uh, that you know, kind of 90 percent and above type of uh, dynamic in our program. Our exam program is, uh, is different than, uh, than the uh, one that you, you mentioned uh, for the Air Force. And so we don't really see that being a dynamic here. Um, but again, you know, as I said, my team is on board to make sure that we've properly bound this. We're taking nothing for granted right now. Uh, 
Lolita, uh, Emma Richardson and I grew up in the same program, the Navy Nuclear Propulsion Program. Uh, foundation within it is examination and re-examination, oral and written, as well as demonstration of proficiency. So what I'm saying is it is in the, the, it is in the ethos, if you will, it is in the process that folks are used to uh, getting examination, getting examined and qualified in there. Therefore, um, I don't perceive, as Emma Richardson said, that, that there's an element of you have to get the highest grade uh, because we're constantly evaluating and self-assessing ourselves within this program. You mentioned this, excuse me, but how many sailors have been decertified? And could you tell us a little more about how this came to light? You, you said one sailor had been encouraged to to join in. It sounded like a sort of right. group of people who were cheating, right. and he came forward. Did this not come to light because of the review that's, uh, that was ordered by the SecDef in relation to the Air Force? It did not. We were, of course, uh, you know, looking very hard at ourselves, as we always do. So I hope a theme that emerges here is that, you know, there is a uh, – climate of, of introspection, of looking for problems and solving them when we're small. So we are constantly assessing ourselves. This did not come uh, forward as a consequence of, of that ongoing thing. This was a sailor who, uh, you know, has been fully trained from the moment he enters boot camp that integrity is a, a foundation of our Navy's operations and uh, including the, the uh, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program. He recognized when he was asked to join in that that's uh, not consistent with those values and uh, mentioned it to the command. And how many have been decertified? It's uh, really, uh, we're, we're still bounding that problem, and so uh, I'm hesitant to give you a number right now because I don't have a final number, uh, but we conservatively estimate that this is probably less than 1% of the uh, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Force. And that would be roughly? Roughly. So we have 16,000 uh, sailors in the uh, program. And in Charleston? In Charleston, uh, it's a roughly, it's a, a few we hundred in Charleston. We'll get you the exact yeah. number, yeah. We'll provide so that we're talking about a dozen or so, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Like 16, so, so a dozen, six, less than 20, is that what you're talking about? Uh, that's the ballpark figure, but again, I hesitate to uh, commit to that because uh, we're still in the very early, we're only 24 hours into this. Olga? Um, I wanted to ask about um, how some of these, um, this incident and the repercussions of it might disrupt potential budget decisions in a constrained environment for subs and carriers, and if there, you know, might be a need identified to fund some more of these internal and external investigations. Well, uh, I don't think it will affect uh, budgetary decisions. As Admiral Richardson explained, uh, we are constantly evaluating ourselves, especially within this program. Uh, we, in fact, have uh, our, our Navy IG, John, has asked that team to take a look at our nuclear uh, propulsion examining and training process. That examination has been going on how long, John? About four months. Now. About four months. And so the, finding things like this occasionally, uh, it, as he's mentioned, it happened four years ago on a, on a vessel. So I don't want to trivialize it. This is very serious. But these are the things that we are very vigilant for. We need to learn from, understand the case study, and, and get in and train about. So uh, I, I don't see it right now as being something that will have a budgetary ramification. But if there is any need to fund additional evaluations, and we'll figure that out, we'll fund that. This is very important to me. Jennifer Griffin? What will be the consequences for those who are found to be guilty of being involved in this? I think that that's a case-by-case -case evaluation. Uh, we generally are pretty forceful about uh, holding people accountable. And so uh, as you know, the investigation continues and we can determine uh, you know, the level of culpability, the level of misconduct, then uh, we'll evaluate that on a case basis. Is it safe to say that if you're caught cheating, you would be kicked out of the Navy? Or what, what's the upper end of punishment? That's uh, certainly removed from the program and then, uh, you know, if. Our history is that if you are uh, caught in an integrity violation, you're removed the pr from the program and generally uh, on to, uh, out of the Navy. Tom Shanker? I'd like to return to the point that Lita was reaching for earlier about your sense of why now. Rightly or wrongly, I think the general public, the taxpayer, sees a contagion of cheating across the military. Mm -hmm. So what is happening now? Is it the op tempo since 9-11? It's been going on for a long time. Nobody caught it. Are these just one-off and inexplicable? Why, Admiral, is this happening now? 
Tom, if I knew that answer, I would be doing all kind of things uh, within the Navy. But one thing is, is for sure, we need to and we will remain vigilant. We will continue to drive home to our people the importance of integrity, the fact that it is the foundation of all that we do in the U.S. Navy. We have to uh, believe everything that somebody says to one another. Again, it is the foundation at sea, in port, and certainly in this program. And so we will be very introspective on this. We will, as I said before, make this very much a case study like we did previous uh, issues that occur uh, in this program and in others, but certainly in this program. Um, it's founded, again, on self-inspection uh, and good assessment. William Barnes? Uh, I'm a, um, two follow-ups and clear points of clarification. Do you think um, that uh, the sailor who came forward uh, to report this um, did so in part because of the attention over the uh, Air Force issue, knowing from that that he had a duty to uh, report what he knew? And two, is there any way to describe this test in any more detail about um, whether it was maintaining a reactor, running a reactor, or what exactly, obviously we're not getting into classified material, but what it was testing? Mm -hmm. Uh, with respect to what the test tests, it's, uh, this particular th is primarily on reactor operation. And so uh, it tests the, uh, the theoretical level of knowledge uh, to be able to qualify for that watch station, that position on the watch team. And uh, that's what this exam serves in conjunction with the oral board, in conjunction with the evaluated on watch assessment. And so the sort of uh, three layers of, of uh, if, evaluation there. Uh, with respect to what motivated the uh, sailor to come forward, uh, we have a, st a steady drumbeat in the Navy and particular in the Navy Nuclear Propulsion Program of, uh, that stresses the importance of integrity to our, as a foundational value. And so uh, it's hard for me to say right now what specifically motivated this sailor, but I think uh, at the foundation he understands the importance of the value of integrity and uh, made his report. Um, Admiral, as you know, the, the Air Force has had their own issues, been conducting their own reviews with cheating of nuclear mis missile years. Has the Navy been doing its own review of its program because of what's been going on in the Air Force? I know the Secretary of Defense had a meeting here at the Pentagon to talk about the broader program. What had the Navy already been doing as, as a result of that? Yeah, the answer to that is yes. The Navy has done a review of the what I'll call the, the nuclear enterprise. Uh, the, the nuclear weapon enterprise involves two services, obviously, the Navy and the Air Force. We have our element, the SSBN force, and all of its supporting entities. Uh, we've been directed to look primarily at the personnel element of that, the qualification people of all those that uh, organize, train, and equip, those that do uh, handle or employ or, if you will, direct operations of nuclear weapons. Uh, the certification uh, therein, and of course the personnel reliability program. Uh, and so that is in progress. What, what we do already, uh, Craig, is every two years uh, we have a, a three-star flag officer review, if you will, the program, uh, coordinated with our director of our strategic systems program, SSP. That strategic systems program are responsible for um, all operations, if you will, and handling of, of our nuclear weapons themselves. So. That has been uh, going on. There's a drumbeat of that, as Admiral Richardson said in his program. We have a similar drumbeat. Now, we are going to take the results of our most recent, which is months old. We are going to take the results of the Schlesinger report. You remember that from a few years ago? We're going to take the results of the Admiral Donald report, if you remember that also was a few years ago. Look and see what was directed in that. Review that. Did we do what it said? How are we doing on that? And then we're going to do an internal assessment coordinated with that. So what has been looked at before? Uh, how was that going? Uh, is it still effective? And where are we now? All of that uh, is underway, and uh, we're due to report in uh, what is now about 45 days. We were assigned this a few weeks ago. Bill Stewart? Um, I just want to get a sense about the, the timing of uh, the person who came forward. Was that person indicating there was a, there's a, this is a new problem, this is a fresh one-off incident, or did, did the evidence suggest that this might be going back a while, this cheating might have been um, more, more systemic or there might have been a pattern of cheating? And also, your, your reticence to put a, a finger on the number, is that because you believe it's going to get much higher? 
Well, the, uh, that uh, is indicative of the fact that we are just getting started. And so any number that I give you, I, I don't know where that's going to go, right? We're just getting started. And so I'm reluctant to give you a number because it could change. It, it may be bound. We just don't know. And so I don't want to put something out there that, uh, that may be accurate, but we may find more, right? So we're in the very early stages of this. And then, uh, I'm sorry, what was the other part of your question? Was this a new, a single one off? So again, part of the investigation, we know that uh, when he was confronted, you know, that we learned about this yesterday. And so in terms of the time frame, uh, we'll get a sense for that in the but investigation. But this individual came forward. He was not asked, right? No, he, no, he, he came forward of his own accord. And this yeah. just happened in the last 24 hours. And so we wanted to get to you very early on to uh, let you know about this. But was it just a pattern that this has been going on for a long time? Or was it suggesting this is a one-off incident that he's been it's up on? To be determined. We'll be back to you when we learn that. Brian? Uh, Brian Bennett with the Boston Globe. A couple of just points of clarification. So to be clear, this test in particular is one of a series of tests that you must perform before you're qualified. Exactly. And then the other, the other question was, was this test to qualify or to requalify someone? In other words, are they already qualified to operate the reactor and they're being retested? Or this is for a, a new person who's never done it taking the test to see if they're qualified. So because these, uh, the folks that we're talking about are on the, uh, the staff, uh, they have already completed their initial qualifications as students through this same program. They have then gone out and uh, re-qualified again at sea on, whether, uh, on the carrier or submarine that they were assigned. And now they are coming back and there's a, an additional requalification process back at those uh, training reactors. So this will be about the third time that they will have been through this uh, qualification sequence. Uh, over the top of all that, there is a continuous training program that uh, in addition to the qualification uh, is a program of lectures and uh, clinics and education uh, with exams and validation along that. So it fits into a, uh, a pretty thorough uh, network of uh, education, qualification, and validation. Tom Vandenbroek. Sir, I have a question about, th these were senior uh, enlisted folks who were the instructors who were implicated in this. Correct. And they were giving the answers to, or offering to give answers to trainees? No. Uh, our understanding to date is they were uh, giving up staff to staff. So this is so that the staff could qualify uh, the position to, to operate the training reactor. You have, to, you have to qualify to operate that, and then additionally you're training students. But we see no evidence of uh, uh, compromises uh, towards the students at this point. Was there anything offered in exchange for these answers? No. Gordon? Uh, just to clarify, coming off uh, Craig's question, I don't want you to describe what was underway in terms of reviews and all that, but I just want to see, does this incident then trigger potentially a broader investigation, not just of this incident that you've been describing, but like a broader kind of wake-up call kind of investigation of the Navy's nuclear um, force. See what I'm saying? Right. We, we will certainly, uh, in this process of bounding the problem, we will take everything that we've, uh, w that we learned from this incident and we will apply that to the broader force. That's just our nature, right? We use these as uh, th these problems as opportunities to check across the force. And so that is part and part, that's par for our course. We will do that. Uh, Gordon, if, uh, I think I should add, uh, as I described to Craig, we're doing this 60-day look that involving our, our nuclear enterprise. We share across enterprises, the nuclear propulsion enterprise. Again, the foundation is integrity. The principles are all there. Our people serve on nuclear-powered uh, SSBNs. Uh, and so those elements have to be shared. So there's, there's a, a lot involved in this across, if you will. Um, yes, will there be any uh, operational impact with these, um, uh, those involved with the cheating possibly suspended? Uh, the Air Force had to suspend or restrict about 120 um, missile layers. Is there any, uh, and people are pulling extra shifts. Do you foresee any type of um, similar operational impact? I could possibly foresee an impact in Charleston. Uh, we'll see if that uh, is broader. What type of uh, impact would that be? So the same sort of thing. So there's, you know, those folks that are implicated are going to be removed from uh, those responsibilities, and 
and other folks will have to uh, possibly pick up uh, those duties. Uh, additionally, there will be a uh, certification process before I allow any kind of operation of that, those plants as well. Um, Admiral uh, Richardson, uh, you, you said the only thing comparable involved a submarine crew. Are you talking about the Memphis? That is it, right. Okay. Why is it comparable? You're talking about something that happened in a training atmosphere, and the other one is talking, you're talking about something that happened on an attack submarine. Right. Uh, the elements that concern me are not so much the, you know, where it happens, but uh, the nature of the incident, which is uh, both on Memphis and in this case, we have, one, uh, a violation of integrity, one of our core principles. Two, uh, you have some kind of, uh, you know, collusion amongst uh, particularly senior people. And so that when we, you know, on those rare occasions that we find those two things, it's of particular concern to us. And that's why I draw the parallels between those two incidents. Uh, Louis Martinez. Can I go back to your under 1% reference? Um, does that mean that that's how many individuals you're looking at uh, who might be implicated? Because if it's some fuzzy math, then it comes up to like under 160 personnel. Right. So I, I, that's kind of my uh, initial bounding of the problem. And so, uh, you know, pending further investigation, um, that's kind of where I see it right now. In terms of what? In terms of uh, personnel that will be implicated. Sorry, she asked for the 42, but it's 16. 16 or 100? No, 16,000 uh, personnel in the uh, plant. And so, used to, I mean, 1% of 16,000, I think, is 160. Right. But in terms of the ballpark figure, uh, you know, it, it's, it's well less than that. So when you said 16, that's, I think, you know, you're going to be closer. But it's, it's, again, it's hard to say. I just am very reluctant to, you know, try and declare a number at this time because, as I said. That's what, that's what I'm having a problem with because you don't want to give a number. It's between 16 and 160, but if you actually decertify people, there would be a number. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, in terms of the number decertified, it's uh, uh, you know, part of this entire pro program. And so I just am reluctant to, you know, get a sense for uh, where we stand right now in an ongoing investigation. How many teams right. are there in this university? There are five different uh, shifts that operate. So, so there are five of those teams that operate in shift work, and uh, you know we uh, essentially do 24/7 training there on uh, on a shift work basis. This is the universe that you're looking at. Oh, well, we're looking across the entire program, so we'll start there. That's where uh, our concern is uh, most acute right now. But we'll uh, make sure that we have uh, taken a look at the entire program to ensure we bound this. Admiral, thank you. All right. And if there's any follow-up questions, just please approach the uh, Navy News Desk or uh, email me. Thank you very much.